essence, purpose and functions of governance in any society and the achievements of set goals are main ingredients of a purposeful and focused political leadership. For a leadership that has none of the above, governance is seen as an instrument of achieving personal agenda and self-glorification. In essence, governance is a serious business which will be seen as a means to an end, an avenue to develop both the government and the governed in a way that will be beneficial to both parties. In the past 2,400 days, Babatunde Fashala's much less passion for the sustenance of his vision and mission for the state, the desire to improve the standard of living through the provision of world-class infrastructure and quality services has continued to be on the front burner. This dream has so far kept the present administration on our toes and continues to reinforce how seriously the people's mandate is held. Hence, within the last 100 days, that is between September 14, 2013, when the last rendition of account was held to date, this present administration has intensified efforts at providing different platforms to actualize its dream. For the people of Lagos East Senatorial District, the quest for continuous improvement in the standard of education saw the handing over of a 12 classroom block at Adishon Junior High School, Ilara Ekbe, and an 18 classroom block at Odogunyo Senior Grammar School in Odogunyo Ikorodu. For the administration, the construction of both schools was informed by the need to keep up with the tempo of sustained provision of quality infrastructure of international standard for schools in the state. Our administration calls to deliver on its promises to the civil populace of Lagos State. Bearing in mind that education is one of the focal points of our administration to leverage on the dividends of democracy to our people. We all know that education is the best legacy we can bestow on our children and any nation, and I mean any nation, without huge investment in education of our citizens is gradually disintegrating the political and socio-economic development of that country and is ready to move to extinction. The developed nations of this world spend huge resources in the education and technological improvements of our citizens, which is today a good testimony of their political, socio-economical, and socio-cultural and technological advancements, which in turn reflect positively on human capacity development and global utilization. However, let me continue to assure you that our administration remains committed to continual improvement in the standard of education in Lagos State. More schools shall be built to reduce the population of pupils in the classroom, that is student classroom ratio from 120 to 1 as we have it in some cases, to 50 or less to meet the UNESCO standard. This was followed by the construction and rehabilitation of 105 classrooms and 108 toilet cubicles at Togede Joye Primary School, Ikorodu, and the UAMC Primary School, Inigbogbo, also in Ikorodu, to further reposition and strengthen the scientific skills of students and teachers alike. A science camp was organized for 300 students and 30 teachers across the six education districts in public secondary schools at the Lagos State Model College, Igbunla, in Ekbe. While there was installation and equipping of science laboratories in 27 secondary schools, which include Elekbe Community Senior Grammar School, Ewu Elekbe, Maya Community Grammar School, Ikorodu, Jagumolu Girls Senior Grammar School, Bariga, Ak Deacon, Adelaja High School in Bariga, Oduobara Senior High School in Ekbe, Army Children's Senior High School, Ibejuleki, amongst others, to enhance practical teaching of science subjects. Also, a thousand school head teachers across the state were trained on how to entrench ICT into pedagogy using digital hubs provided in three state schools, namely Ojota Senior Secondary School, Oregon Senior High School, Oregon Suruliri Senior Secondary School Suruliri, and this was done in collaboration with the British Council, and 970 primary school teachers were equally trained on improvement of teaching and learning in schools. In the health sector, the fourth phase of the Moto Park Health and Safety Screening Program took place at the new Garage Moto Park in Bariga. For the Moto Park campaign, eye screening was carried out for 340 clients, out of which 248 were given glasses. 
Urine drug tests were carried out on 355 clients. Two tested positive for cocaine, while 54 tested positive for marijuana. As well as an alcohol test was also done on 351 people with the aid of breathalyzers. 185 of them tested positive for alcohol. About two years ago, we sat down from the team and we said, what are the common problems that our people encounter with respect to road traffic? What are the common lifestyles that people who inhabit uh, garages exhibit? And we sat down. We decided that for us to reduce death on our roads, for us to reduce the incident of road traffic accidents, we needed to address the issue of alcohol, to address the issue of hard drugs like cocaine, marijuana, all other substance abuse. Apart from that, what can we do to also help our people, especially commercial motor drivers, to ensure the safety of our people? And we say we also check them for hypertension, like we all do for other people. We screen them for diabetes, and more importantly too, we check their sight. Because if a driver drives and he falls ill or he falls in an accident, he's not the only one. More people who are his passengers are also at risk. And we talk to the Ministry of Transportation, how do we check all this? And this is how we came about with this, pro this program. The Health and Safety Awareness Program, Road Trip Awareness Program. The essence of this motor park campaign is to create awareness on the importance of good health while on the wheels, as well as discourage the use of abusive drugs and substances amongst drivers, and thus reduce road traffic accidents on our roads. And to bring this awareness campaign on how we can improve our lives, how we can improve our healthy living, how we can make our business more comfortable, more reliable to ourselves, to our families, to other road users, and also to be a pride of our state neighbors. The Mutual Park Health and Safety Awareness Campaign has become a very active, active platform where we meet and talk to our drivers as well as other stakeholders, the market men and women, conductors, motor owners and all other stakeholders in this respect. And so let us know the importance of consumption of alcohol in our system, the responsible way in which we can consume alcohol for the safety of ourselves, our drivers, the safety of our other road users, and for us not to endanger our lives. This is a very, a very important platform. In addition to sensitization and awareness campaign, we have spent 2,500 public transportation drivers for blood, alcohol content, substance abuse, hypertension and diabetes. And also to let you know that with this screening program we have discovered that a large number of all, all of our drivers are diabetics, they are hypertensive, they have substance in their system and they are still prone to taking dangerous This was followed with the breast, cervical and prostate cancer screening carried out in the three senatorial districts. For Lagos West, the screening was held in Alimosho, while that of Lagos Central was held at Lagos Island, and that of Lagos East was held at the Shomolu local government area. A total number of 3,095 women were screened for breast cancer. 82 women had breast lump and three suspicious breast cancer. 2,919 women were equally screened for cervical cancer. 14 women were seen with visual inspection with acetic acid VIA. Meanwhile, 748 men were also screened for prostate cancer. And a total of 92 patients were screened for limb deformity corrective surgery 
of which 35 were found fit for surgery and were successfully operated on. In its efforts at steaming rural urban migration and further empowered the rural dwellers, a cold room was handed over to fishermen and fishmongers at Oluo Market in Ekwe local government, comprising of a smoking kiln, washing and cutting slabs, a generator, borehole with overhead tank, and toilet facility for users. This is part of the administration's efforts to help reduce post-harvest losses, complement their business, and the benefits of economic aspect of their businesses. Still, for the people of Lagos East Senatorial District, specifically for the citizens in Eredu LCDA, the administration completed and handed over Okemagba Community Hall in Eredu LCDA. Benefiting communities include Igboye, Ilara, Odoragunshin, Odoyagunshin, Ibon, amongst others. The BRF administration continues to hold up law and order as essential cornerstones of development. To this end, the administration completed and commissioned in September the combined Ademola Candid Johnson High and Magistrate Court Complex at Ikorodu, the ultra modern judicial houses, eight court complexes on four floors, including the judges' chambers, the registrar's office, conference room, a library, and the canteen. This makes it possible for all judges and magistrates in the area to carry out their functions in a conducive environment with full facilities. In continuation of the various efforts made at improving food production through agriculture, Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola, under the Agric Yes program, graduated 300 students of course 2, 3 and 4 at the Agriculture Training Institute, Araga Muka Ekwe. To complement this, he also empowered the graduates with about 1 billion naira through the Lagos State Microfinance Institution, LASME. Still at that institute, the five new fully automated 10,000 bird capacity broiler house, five units of 10,000 bird capacity poultry pen for layers were also commissioned. This has acquired new knowledge, first of all, most importantly, knowledge, and the magnificent has offered me an opportunity to be heard outside of my own cubicle, to be heard outside and to be able to make an impact in my, in my close environment and outside of the Having been there, it has been a wonderful experience completely. It has been totally different from what I experienced back there in school. I've been exposed to um, the latest technologies um, of uh, the I've been, I've been exposed to new ways of doing agriculture in the modern ways. Particularly I've been exposed to world class uh, world standard technologies in, in areas of um, in several areas of agriculture. Talking about the piggy, poultry, fishery, vegetables, which are particularly pigs and interest in. Projects commissioned on the Araga farm include 64 tons capacity per day feed mill, 32 tons capacity per day cassava flour processing factory, 2.34 kilometer road network, and 200 units of two bedroom flats farm estate. Meanwhile, 10 new 10,000 bird capacity poultry pen for layers is under construction. In addition came the establishment of high quality cassava flour factory at Araga Ekwe in the heart of the cassava belt. This is to help process 1,800 meter tons of cassava tubers to be planted on about 500 hectares of land. Meanwhile, the state government during the period under review trained 400 young farmers in various aspects of agriculture, including fish farming, beekeeping, poultry, and vegetable production. As usual, the annual World Food Day was celebrated. For this year's celebration, the administration relaunched the Young Farmers Club. The essence is to encourage more youths to see agriculture as a career and business and also have a replenished system through which youths are expected to take over from the aged in producing food for the teeming populace. The World Food Day it's a day that is celebrated all over the world as far as the food security for our populace generally in the world is concerned. And Lagos State is not an exception. A lot of farmers, they will come around with their products to showcase, to exhibit, to know some of the technologies that we have been pushing for the past year, to showcase them the benefits that are accrued to the majority of our farmers 
we are showcasing all those things today. As far as social security is concerned in Lagos State, I would say that Lagos State government is doing a lot to make that to make sure that uh, food is secured in Lagos State. And a lot of measures have been put in place to achieve this. You know, as the Ministry of uh, Agriculture is concerned, you know, which is the arrowhead to making sure that the food security is achieved. They are doing a lot in terms of uh, mobilizing the farmers, supporting the farmers, providing an enabling environment for the production, to increase our production in a lot of uh, areas. Talk of rice, talk of cassava, talk of poultry, and a lot. Even the farmers, uh, as far as the artisanal fishery is concerned, and fish farmers, they are not left out. So everything is brought down to the good organization that the ministry is putting ahead. No doubt, roads are important in the economic development of any society. Hence, in the Korodu local government, the administration completed the Ijede Egbin, Lowa, Odongunyo, Rotimi, Odusonya roads, while Titi Esho Street in Kosofe, LG, and Balogun Amodu Road in Ejiri, Sabiu Olariwaju Road in Ekbe were also completed. The battle against perennial traffic congestion was once again highlighted with the launch of traffic mayor course in the state by His Excellency Babatunde Rajifashala at the Blue Roof Hall, LTV Complex, Agidingbi, comprising professionals and respectable members of the society. They are to further complement efforts of traffic officials already in existence and represent government in all nook and crannies of the state. An interactive session was held with emphasis on the need for the free flow of traffic. The state government's desire to scientifically plan for the needs of the citizenry received a boost with the launch of the residence registration exercise in the state. It is aimed to develop a reliable data required for efficient planning purpose towards achieving government's lofty goals for its citizenry. It's a watershed moment in the life of our state. But I must say that this is not still our destination. But we are taking one big step, perhaps the most important step this administration has taken towards delivering on that promise of a brighter and rewarding future. If you imagine a Lagos where every community has enough of a school. If you imagine a Lagos where all those schools have all the infrastructure that they need and all the resources that they require to get the best education. If you imagine a Lagos where the waiting time to catch a bus is predictable. If you imagine a Lagos where there are enough hospitals and there are enough doctors and nurses and you don't have to wait too long to be attended to. If you imagine a Lagos where you can open the tap at any time of the day and you will get water. If you imagine a Lagos where electricity supply is regular because we can predict demand so that we can meet supply then you can see the dream that I see. You can see the dream that underpins last. And that Lagos is us. That is the Lagos that we reach out for today. That is the city state that we all aspire to have. And if you look back several years ago, I think we are already living witnesses to those possibilities. We are living witnesses to how our state is changing on a daily basis for the better. This event that I feel so highly privileged to flag off today is our biggest initiative to live from to that dream. This event is much more difficult has been much more complex to imagine and to conceive and deliver than even that bridge in Lekki. This is much more difficult to do than to build a road. 
Any government that seeks the kind of efficiency that we seek, any government that understands that its primary purpose is about people as we do, such a government will pursue data collection and data gathering as very critical infrastructure. This is why today is a watershed day. The day when we formally launch the Lagos Residence Registration Exercise that will enable us to register and collect the data of all persons who are residents of Lagos. In preparation for the coming year, the administration proposed the sum of 489,690 billion naira for the wealthy of Lagosians for year 2014. The proposed estimate is a slight reduction compared to the 2013 budget of 506,605 billion naira. The budget is tailored toward the completion of ongoing projects, consolidate the gains made, and improvement of the quality of life of the people. I have done so with a lot of pleasure and with a deep sense of responsibility for the expectations that the budget raises for our people that things will get better. Year after year, we have met these expectations and things have got better. That feeling of pleasure and the sense of responsibility is no less different today as I present our budget proposal for 2015. That budgets are important for us and that we do our best to keep the promises that we made. I therefore propose a budget of 489 billion 690 million naira for the year 2014. This budget is made up of a recurrent expenditure of 234 billion 665 million naira and a capital expenditure of 255 billion and 25 million naira. Our capital to recurrent ratio for this year will be 52% capital, 48 recurrent, as against 58% capital, 42 recurrent in year 2013. Total personnel costs as a component of total revenue will be 19%. Total personnel costs as a component of IGR will be 27%. And personnel costs as a percentage of recurrent expenditure will be 37 percent. As I promised last year about reducing our deficit, a zero deficit financing requirement is proposed for year 2014. Undoubtedly, the last hundred days has been another enterprising period for Governor Babatin de Fashola to deliver life-changing projects and policies to the people of Lagos State. The effects of these programs and policies no doubt will be beneficial to both parties while the work continues. It is indeed work in progress.